Ash and you're watching the Davey Damage Show. It is the Davey Damage Show once again here on YouTube. Thank you very much for everyone checking it out. All the new subscribers and everything else, that's so fucking awesome. I'll try my best to subscribe back unless your channel really sucks. Now today I'm heading along to check out another local collection. It's our good friend Frank from the Toy Power Podcast. I'll point up here but I'll put his photo up here. And uh, we're going to be checking out his awesome collection of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles along with Transformers. Today's episode is also going to be a two-parter because Frank just has a massive collection of both those toy lines. So uh, let's stop fucking around and go check it out. It is the Day of Your Damage Show once again and today I'm looking at a collection of something that is close to both my heart and Frank's heart and it's not even internet pornography. Frank, thank you so much for having us today. We are looking at this second, well, one of the top two best Ninja Turtle collections. Top two Ninja Turtle collections I have personally ever seen today. And uh, thank you for having us. No, no worries. How long have you been collecting? Well, I have been collecting probably actively since about 2000 when I sort of first got back into things. Uh, but of course, as a kid, I had a whole lot of uh, yep. turtles and stuff. Uh, yeah, so it's been... I forget that 2000 was, you know, 17 years ago now. No, like it wasn't. Just, yes. It was about five years ago. Yeah, actually. okay. Close, yeah. So, um, what is the one grail piece you don't have yet in your collection? Um, look, I also, as you'll see surely, I also collect Transformers. So, probably the one I really want from that is uh, Omega Supreme. Big, giant thing. It's got battery so you can walk around. It also transforms into a, a tank with a tread and a rocket. Motorized lights and sound. I don't know where I put the thing if I ever got it, but I would love one of those. Awesome. And what is the grail piece that you do have? Obviously, we'll be showing it shortly, but <laughs> tell us about it. Um, look, it's probably the in the Turtles line, the uh, Scratch, yep. which of course is the one figure from vintage circa 90, 93 that everybody wants. I didn't even really go searching for it, just on eBay one day, and I just went, I have that ridiculous amount of money in my Skyrocket. This guy. Let's do it. So, yeah. Now, also, you do Toy Power Podcast with our previous guest, That's Trent it. and Ben. Yep, absolutely. You got your name, Ben. <laughs> and uh, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so it was, um, I've actually been tossing around the idea for podcast for a while, and then I sort of reached out to uh, Ben and Trent and Darren as well and said, hey, this is what I'm thinking, what do you guys think? And they're like, oh, well, actually, we're about to record our first episode in a couple of days. Do you want to join us sort of thing? So yeah. it all, all worked out really well. I know all those guys from our... Um, Toy, toy, SA Toy Collectors yep. group. Um, yeah, I've never done anything like this before. I'm not a, not a YouTuber or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, it's going really well. We're up to about episode 30 odd. We've joined a network with some American guys who I've been listening to their podcast yep. for years and they've come on board giving us lots of tips and we've spent money on actual equipment, which makes us feel like, you know, we know what we're doing, which is not always the case. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having us. I'll put the link to the uh, podcast. You can check it out. I'll put it somewhere really weird. I'll put it here and it'll be reading up and down like this for no reason at all <laughs> other than to be a dick. So let's go check out this collection. It is the Davy Damage Show. All right, so this shelf is pretty much uh, a lot of the big stuff that I'm not really going to be able to fit on a shelf too easily. That blimp is one my dad brought back from America, back at the height of the craze, and it's uh, pretty much kept inflated for the last 20 odd years. So it's, uh, they don't make them like that anymore. Uh, you see we've got the sewer there, there from the 2003 line tucked in the corner. Uh, Zaramon Space Cruiser, I think it is, 2003 again. Good old Technodrome, who doesn't love the Technodrome? Uh, those cups have seen a bit of action. <laughs> I think everybody had a set of those uh, growing up in the uh, in the 90s. Um, original turtle there, so I bought that afterwards. I never had that as a kid, so to pick that up complete with the little cardboard stuff was um, was pretty exciting. And then the uh, mech wreck is off to the side, uh, 2003, and combines robots and turtles. Seemed like a no-brainer to me. Okay, so this is the uh, that giant Leonardo that folds out into a, a base, which looks completely ridiculous. So just a giant Leonardo he is. Uh, that suitcase, I have actually travelled with that before, um, much to the laughter of everybody else, but didn't really care. I'm not even sure what's in there. And then uh, my fan favourite, uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar at her peak, uh, just Buffy is... Um, 
Yeah. Awesome. All right, so this is my main sort of uh, vintage turtles line. You see, I've got the different uh, different sort of subgroups there. There's a bit of a gap there that people point out sometimes. That's because I know I've only got three out of the four. You can see the space ones in particular. Uh, so I leave a gap there to, deliberately, so I'm not having to rearrange the whole goddamn shelf when I get a, acquire a new piece. Uh, so we've got some of the um, head dropping ones there. They're kind of cool, a little bit ridiculous, but uh, I think they're pretty cool. The um, movie ones down the front there. Uh, what else we've got? We come across, we've got the, the Shogun stuff, the guys in the silver armor. Um, everybody raves on about Scratch being hard to find. Try and find a Shogun Shell 8. He's the big dinosaur looking dude with the purple purple swords. He is hard to find and arguably more expensive than than scratch, uh, so pretty chuffed to uh, to have him on the shelf. Until I leave tonight. Uh, yeah, what? All right, continuing on with this shelf, we've got the, uh, a lot of these are from my childhood, particularly the, the rock and roll turtles. I just think that was a very smart, you know, combination. What do kids love more than turtles? A rock, classic rock and roll, and uh, got the army turtles there. Scratch, of course, is hiding at the back there. Um, very hard to find. I was just sort of messing around on eBay and, and there he was and no weapons or any of that sort of stuff but pretty pretty psyched to have him as, as part of my collection. Um, so then you, with, with all the turtle sets I sort of started to blend into the villains here so you see you got snake tail and pizza face and hand tracks with all these bits and pieces. Of course big old crang up the back there. Um, yeah, and then we move into like the centerpiece of this whole shelf with the fifth anniversary turtle right up the front there. Splinter and Shredder fighting over a canister of ooze, which is really what kickstarted the whole thing. And good guys, bad guys, and Casey and some of the others. We move into the the good guy section. So yeah, here's all the the good guys. So I try to keep this as all right. Anything that's not a turtle variant all all together. Um, I like Sandstorm up the back there, he's a, he's a big uh, camel and even his accessories are like he's got a magic flying carpet that's a shield, like I think so. <laughs> they're just really well thought out. You've got the neutrinos down the front, they're pretty classic, they look you know pretty accurate to the, uh, to the cartoon. Um, uh, Hotspot's another rare one up the back, a Dalmatian there, he's um, not quite as bad as Scratch, but can go for uh, can go for a pretty penny with with all these bits and pieces. Um, the uh, was it um, Hot the Dragon Hold Hothead? That's right. He's in the the new show, looking very different, and voiced by Mark Hamill nonetheless. But uh, yeah, he's pretty cool. The token Australian character next to him, because <laughs> um, of course he's a kangaroo. Because why not? Get a uh, walk about. That's it. And Toon Turtles down the front there. They're pretty cool. They're, Pretty hard to find with the you know without being bro broken like the action feature and them tends to break really easily. Uh, you've got Hooker April there with her <laughs> with her hair. <laughs> my sons in my collection call it a doll. <laughs> Why have you got a doll? It's pretty fair. <laughs> and yeah, then the sewer squirting ones and a couple of little odd ones down the end there that I haven't really haven't really found a home for and I've only got one of the possible four sets. So always collecting more. So this is uh, more turtle variants. These are a lot of the more action feature orientated ones. You got the wind up turtles. Um, I think everyone had one of those back in the day. Uh, these are the um, what are they? Auto mutations line where they can actually transform into cars and stuff. So you know, combining transformers and turtles is, is kind of my jam. Uh, at the front there, the big guys in white. They're the auto mutations. Really cool. You just once they're all packed away, you squeeze the legs together, and all the armor flips out of out of the back. Um, you can see old trench coat up the top there. That is uh, trench coat Donatello, unfortunately, but he is actual cloth. Very hard to find. Was lucky to uh, score him off for guy in America. Uh, the turtle trolls. They're actually a gift from my wife. She brought them to me all mint in box and stuff, and um, as a Christmas present. So she did uh, really well. As you can see, I spent ages styling the hair, uh, but we don't play with dolls, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> uh, what else we got? Oh, the, some of the more mutation stuff where you've got Cat April and um, you've got Usagi and oh, Usagi, Mato Yoshi and Rokosaki down the front. And then the, the Olympic turtles up the back there because, you know, go, go Team USA. 
All right, so this is kind of my vintage uh, vehicles shelf. Uh, a little bit hard and a little bit cramped away because some of these vehicles are just massive and designed to take in, take in all the figures. Uh, I love the Foot Cruiser. It's probably one of my favorite vehicles along with the, the classic Turtles van and stuff. Um, the Pizza Thrower there is fairly new uh, addition. Uh, I've got some of the smaller, you know, plungers and the, and the stuff at the front there. Um, I think they're just... Playmates, say what you will about their figures and stuff, but their vehicles are, are just top-notch. You know, you, you, you're not many toy lines do vehicles and stuff to this sort of size and scale anymore. Alright, so these are the uh, the Mondo Turtles, uh, modelled straight after the, the classic comic book stuff. I do have uh, Raphael, actually Trent's got that at the moment, waiting for me to pick up. Um, I've deliberately kept them with the red bandanas, because I think, you know, the coloured stuff is in every other iteration. It's cool to have representation of that classic Mirage stuff. Um, yeah, extremely cool figures. Got a set of um, ceramic or porcelain things up the back there. Got those from old mate Guy. He just, he had them laying around and he didn't really know what he was going to do with them. And when he heard I was such a big fan of turtles, he's like, Frank, I think these, you need to have these kind of thing. Um, very fragile, but still in, in pretty damn good nick considering their age. Uh, what have we got down here? This is some of the, the Kid Robot, or is the Token McDonald's toys that I'm sure we've all seen before. Uh, the Kid Robot um, key rings. I think I'm only missing one, which is probably what's stopping me from opening them, which I know is really stupid, but anyway. Uh, I think they look really cool. I think I'm missing the Shredder, maybe? Yeah, I think that's the only one that's missing. So yeah, love to complete that, but uh, pretty cool, pretty cool set nonetheless. And just while we're on the subject of these turtles here, they came from McDonald's, they're in Happy Meals. And if you're out there trying to sell these to Ninja Turtle collectors for cheap, or even for expensive, should I say, just because they're vintage, you should definitely go and fuck yourself. These can be found in any op shop holding up the back walls, along with any other McDonald's toys. So stop trying to sell them as vintage toys. Thank you. Yep, so these are some uh, vintage uh, badges or buttons, I suppose. Uh, again, they're one of these things I had as a kid and just went, oh, yep. And then I've pulled them out of storage and gone, actually, they're really damn cool. The artwork on them is closer to the Mirage comics. Um, and God knows where I got them from. I've had them, I've had them for that long. As we move up, we've got the, uh, well, they're a Comic-Con exclusive, the, I forget what they're called, those ones at the back there. Um, Ninja Turtles. That's the one. <laughs> um, yeah, I forget the name, but yeah, I actually got those when I was in San Diego, so. The Loyal Subjects. Loyal Subjects, that's the one, thank you. And uh, I'm pretty loath to open them, only because of, you know, they're, they're exclusive. You definitely and, should. Oh, everything else is open, so I probably will eventually. Don't be, be a Trent. Don't be a Trent. <laughs> the motto. Uh, yeah, and I've got a collector's case there that's um, in pretty good nick, considering it's essentially just a bit of cardboard that's 30 years old now. Um, yeah, I'm not going to put figures in there, because then you can't see them. So, in the corner there, hiding away, is the first Goken or Goku, or whatever the actual rip-off name is. Uh, amazing figure, like solid metal with the feet and his trunks and stuff, but um, until NECA do something, the best crane you're ever going to find, to be honest. Pop vinyls, because, well, yeah. One of those guys. Everyone has to have them. <laughs> collecting pop vinyls is like collecting toenails. <laughs> You Everyone's might you them. might enjoy it, but it's just kind of creepy. <laughs> uh, I've got some uh, turtle cars there, the orange things in the corner. Uh, old mate Tristan got those for me from America. Thanks, Comple Tristan. Completely sealed and stuff. Uh, and then the cars right in the corner are the ones I had as a kid, and I'm 99% sure that's a complete set. But you're just going to have to take my word for it. Uh, moving across, we've got the Lego stuff. This is before it turned to Mega Blocks or whatever it is now. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got most of this. Um, I think I'm still missing one or two sets, but Lego being Lego, it's it's the ultimate investment other than gold because it's so bloody hard to find uh, at a decent price. So Shredder's Lair up the back there is probably one of the harder to find ones. Um, and yeah, the minifigures are great. You'll see knockoffs of them all over the place. But uh, yeah, oh, this is a pretty cool, pretty cool representation of, of the boys. All right, so at the top, I've got some of the uh, the big boys. Basically, uh, that were, the shelf was a little bit too big for them, so I've put 
Bebop and Rocksteady at, uh, at either end with uh, their ones. The Out of the Shadows design I really quite like, say what you will about the movie, but I thought, you know, the, the way they'd taken two clown characters and made them actually threatening was uh, was kind of cool and you see the little uh, transforming turtles down the front of the the big boys there they're sort of wow they went from this to this so yeah. i liked in the movie where bebop and rocksteady look at each other's dicks yeah that's the one that's it's kind of something they would do uh so this is some of the uh the 2003 stuff i got big into this line it's one of my favorites predominantly villains on here or, or ones that are sort of second tier villains you've got some of the shredder clones there with the forearms uh you've got the manhattan mutants i think is that big bug looking guy he's actually got a flip up head and the head underneath is the the kid who designed him that was part of a competition that uh playmates were running at the time uh there's some ridiculous flying shredder and foot soldiers up the back there because hey why not uh, fighting gear turtles there in the middle. They were some of the first uh, variants from the 2003 line. Uh, basically, just you know, a shell is not enough. You need more armor, apparently. Uh, up the back, we've got the Ninja Knights. Again, quite ridiculous, but they were actually in the show. Um, there's a gold set of them as well that I'd love to get my hands on, but uh, the silver set's still pretty cool. And then we've got what are they? The Combat Warriors who have like the spinning sort of you know ninja weapon action uh, i think they're actually really well represented in that it hides they don't look like they're wind-up figures um, and they've got some different sort of you know um uh, articulation and all that sort of stuff all right so this is probably the main uh villain shelf for the 2003 um i'll try to keep like the you know the more well-known figures in the middle so out on the fringes you're going to find some people like Cervante romero or romeo whatever the fuck his name is um, I'd, I'd appreciate you didn't swear on this show. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's fucked. <laughs> uh, some of the fast forward stuff up the back there, which say what you will about those episodes, I think the designs are still pretty cool. The Dark Turtles are fantastic. The Dark Turtles are amazing. Like, the just, fact that they made their skin the colour of their, uh, their bandanas the, yeah. was just such a good idea. It was a great design. I've got the, uh, the Space Turtles in there because they sort of match in with some of the... Um, the Triceraton stuff that sort of happens. You can see the um, uh, General Blank, I think his name is there, with some of the Triceratons. Um, and then, you know, you've got a couple of Shredder variants and stuff. Baxter Stockman taking one of his uh, many forms. There's a couple of different versions. The, the one in the corner here, the uh, looking, trying to look like the Terminator, that's actually Baxter Stockman, but very hard to find. Cyborg. Uh, yeah, Cyborg Stockman. <laughs> uh, and he comes with that little blue critter down the front as well. So I think there's three Baxters up there all together. And of course Shredder and Karai and Hun. And the Foot Mystics, the uh, the fire guy. For those who know the show, there was they did like a bit of a Captain Planet thing. There was about five different elements. You know, wind, water and all that. They only ever made the one figure. Um, so I'd love them to do some sort of custom work and, you know, maybe come up with a full set. All right, so here's uh, 2003 stuff again, but these are more turtle variants. Um, the the monster trapper or monster hunter. There was two different lines, and I always get confused which one. Uh, you see the little jelly monster things down the front. They've all got these backpacks that trap them, sort of Ghostbusters style, which is uh, kind of cool. Uh, next, we have probably the most ridiculous out of the 2003 is turtles in wetsuits. Why? I don't bloody know, but just because. Um, Donatello. It's for kids to take in the bath. <laughs> Donatello with a trident is probably the most useful thing he's, he's ever done. Um, up the back there is the, what are they, the Air Ninja ones, Turtles with Jetpacks. Um, I like the fact that all the helmets are actually different designs, some of them being old school, some of them looking very Top Gun. Um, and then in the, the front there you've got the... Oh, forget what they were called. Stream Sports, uh, was it? Yeah, something like that. Um, whilst the costumes were never in the show, them riding those particular vehicles, skateboard, a scooter, and that, that's actually in, like, I think the fourth or fifth episode in the series. Um, so I like that as a, as a little nod. They realised they just couldn't package them with the same thing. They had to spruce them up and give them different colours. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good, pretty accurate representation otherwise. Alright, so yeah, we've got the 2003 uh, sort of good guys and, and associated ones. 
Uh, we've got Feudal Treader there that ties into some of the, the Gen and uh, Usagi storylines. Um, Leatherhead down the end there. Uh, Agent Bishop with his red hand that has never really been explained why the toy has a red hand, but that's uh, a bit strange. So what have we got here? We've got Fugitoid, of course, April and Splinter there. Looking up the back, we've got the fast forward stuff. Uh, pretty cool designs with some of their techno weapons. Um, Splinter, probably the best looking Splinter we've got out of, out of the whole line, to be honest. Uh, then we've got the Battle Nexus guys, they're the ones in all the silver armor. Um, that relates to the, the storyline in there. I think they look really cool. Those ones are some of my favorites. Um, coming down the front, we've got the usual suspects with uh, Casey Jones and April and Splinter. Fugitoid, of course. That's not Trent, it's Fugitoid. Uh, Silver Sentry was like their answer to Superman, but not. Um, just to give Mikey an excuse to be a, a superhero for an episode. The Utrom in this uh, incarnation are good guys. No, I think there's a single crane reference throughout the whole show, uh, but otherwise they're good guys. And then you've got the uh, some of the monsters and Traximus over the um, over the back there. Uh, Quarry at the very back, the blue blue looking monster thing, ridiculously hard to find. Probably the closest thing you get to scratch. Um, in the 2003 line. I won't tell you what I paid for it because it's embarrassingly large. Um, yeah, and then down the front you've got the uh, Mystic Turtles. Uh, that was a storyline where they're basically tapping into their chi or some sort of Chinese stuff. I don't really know. Uh, but basically an excuse to paint the turtles with mad tats, really. Alright, here's some more extra uh, vintage turtle stuff. These are some of the more ridiculous ones. I think that's why they're on this shelf, because I don't really have a memory of them as a kid, other than just how outrageous they are. There's a Star Trek Turtles, of course. That's the one that draws a lot of attention from people who don't know the, the turtles that well. But why would you do that? Well, because Playmates own the rights to both of them, clearly. Uh, you got the Coil Force ones, they, they look like turtles on roids. They've basically got springs in their joints. Um, pretty cool, and then the Warriors of the Forgotten Sewer on the end there. There's a couple more in that sort of subgroup that I haven't got yet. Um, but you know, Donatello's a dwarf, so it's it's probably the best Donatello figure there is, really. All right, so here's some more uh, weird and wacky variants from the vintage stuff. These are the uh, Mutaforce uh, turtles, basically just trying to be Iron Man from the looks of it, they're in these crazy suits of armor, but they are the, the mini turtles in, in the middle of them all, so they're, they're kind of cool. Um, these are the Cyber Ninja ones, there's a couple of Bebop, and, no, sorry, Rocksteady and Splinter I've got to get. Um, these were another one that I kind of bought new in the box because all the chrome and shit gets worn off of the, uh, off of the ones that people have played with as kids. Um, and then these are the... Oh, super, super, super yeah. mutants. That's the one. Uh, this is pretty much if Japan did the turtles because they've all got like Wolverine heads and and roided out, but like armor and shit. They're um, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty hard to find actually, um, but the weapons are just really awesome on them. I think most of them have some sort of spin around or you know missile firing feature. All right, so this is some of my uh, mainly two thousand and three. Vehicles, um, 2003 was a line I got big into and just need a spot to put all these massive, massive vehicles. Um, pizza Thriller, part Carl's Party Van and stuff of course. Uh, going down there's all the different trucks because who doesn't need more trucks? Apparently the turtles love trucks and bikes because there are crap loads of them. Little turtle sub in the corner, I like that one. Um, one of my favourites. That's the anchovy thing down the side there I've got to open up one day. Um, but yeah, coming across there's a big, uh, that's from Fast Forward, that big square looking thing. Opens up into a full on play set. And a couple of sneaky little, uh, little Nickelodeon ones in there. So here's another, this is a fairly new edition. Um, this is where I put some of the more, the bigger turtle stuff uh, and sort of grouped them into Ones are the same, and look, as, uh, as I'm sure we'll zoom in on, the NECA stuff is just absolutely incredible. The, the eyes, the likenesses, um, the different hands they give you, um, they just 
probably my favorite turtles thing ever um they're just amazing so would you say that necker gave you a great hand job i would not use those words but you're pretty close uh, <laughs> uh donatello still looks ugly as shit but what are you gonna do um that's it you can't polish can't a turd, polish a turd. <laughs> uh leonardo for mine he is just that oh you know i'm looking straight at the eyes now and it's just it's just uncanny how close to the film film version that is mikey i thought very cool comes with bloody pork runs of all things like i thought that was a really nice touch um and then yeah just a sort of juxtaposition then with the the 2003 turtles which i think are still a really nice looking simple mold and then you know the um the 2014 stuff as well just a sort of bit of variety in there good look at this shelf for days all right so this uh this is my buddy leonardo uh this was actually for my 30th birthday uh, i had a costume party and basically was come dressed as your childhood hero my sister as it turns out is into her cosplay stuff and she took one look at me and goes i'm making you a leonardo costume you know that and i was like yes yes you are uh, part of the deal was I had to wear it to Oz Comic Con uh, a couple of weeks afterwards, which I'd never been to at that stage. And I was pretty much treated like a rock star. I think even the Lord Mayor of Adelaide at one point freaked out and said, Oh my God, you, me and the Halo Master Chief are having a photo shoot right now. Um, so yeah, some great memories in this bad boy. Um, hot as hell because it's basically latex over the top of foam. So you can wear it in the dead of winter and, and still lose weight. It was fantastic. Uh, so these are the uh, black and white uh, stuff. As you've seen, I'm not big on uh, keeping stuff mint in box, but these are just amazing when you consider this is this is where I started with turtles. They're black and white. They're ugly looking, and and this is just a perfect representation of that. Necker killed it once again. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see me ever opening these ones, which is uh, which is saying something. All right, so this is a bit of a, an odds and sods sort of shelf. Um, we've got the, uh, probably right in the middle, we've got the big uh, turtle set. This is one that I may well open, but this was, again, NECA doing their finest work and basically the, the Mirage style shredder that we, we always wanted, but we're never really going to get uh, from Playmates or Nickelodeon. The different types of foot, there's even a little, little Utrom Krang in there. Um, this is an amazing set. I just cannot bring myself to open it just yet. Probably need another shelf all on its own for this bad boy. Um, one of my favourites. Up above, we've got a bit of He-Man and Skeletor. I never got into the Masters of the Universe classics. I'm pretty sure I'm the only member of our podcast who didn't. Um, but these two are just, you know, straight off the Filmation page. Um, and funnily enough, I got them from Trent. Who would have thought? Um, on the left there we've got, uh, that's a Mouser exclusive pack from San Diego, so again, loath to open it because of, it, remembers, it reminds me of the trip, uh, and of course uh, Sub-Zero, who is way better than Scorpion in my opinion. Oh, we're, we're talking facts tonight <laughs> on the Daily Damage Show. That's um, why you didn't get to be in the third game, Scorpion. That's right. Everyone goes, oh, Scorpion. Sub-Zero is the only character to have been in every single Mortal Kombat And he's on go. <laughs> Suck a dick, Scorpion. <laughs> Alright, so this is the uh, 2012 uh, Nickelodeon Turtle stuff. There's not a whole lot of order to this at the moment. I've just sort of thrown things up there. I've, I've still got to tear them up and, and make it look pretty. Uh, but there's some pretty cool figures in there. You've got the, uh, the newest ones right down the front there with the Samurai Turtles. Uh, but a lot of these are the bad guys, you can see. There's a couple of different versions of Shredder in there. Uh, Mutagen Man down the front, or not quite down the front, down the back. Uh, Cockroach Terminator, I think his name is. Uh, Armagon, which I never thought we'd see um, in plastic. But uh, yeah, so a bit of a mishmash, but uh, next time you come around, these will be uh, much better organised. Alright, so this is a very special part of my collection. This is my uh, Supergirl collection. Small, but definitely still growing. Um, it's to, uh, in memory of uh, my daughter, um, her favourite Supergirl figure was this little one here, uh, she took that thing everywhere with her, um, and so yeah, so I, I consider it part of my collection, but not in a, in a different way, um, as, as the wife said, if I have to spend money for food on Supergirl, she's okay with that, not so much with the other stuff, so uh, yeah, it means a lot to me, this shelf, um, yeah, very special.